G'day guys, hey uh, my name's Wayne and this is the start of a painting tutorial about how I paint the sea and waves and I think it's going to be the start of an odyssey, an odyssey of learning where I'm going to teach you everything I've learned about painting the sea, about the patterns and the colours and that that go into making painting realistic water and um, while I'm doing that I'm probably going to learn a lot more myself about painting the waves, you never stop learning. So. Let's start that now. I painted a painting last week and we're going to do a, a narrated time lapse where I'm going to show you a few things about how I done it. So let's head home. This is close to my house. Right, here we are. Now that's the painting reference photo above it, um, you see I made some changes and you can see if we go in, you can see my style of painting is kind of quite brush strokey and quite raw up close but as you get back, it starts to look like a wave, use your imagination, looks a lot like a wave. Um, anyway, it's just paint, oil paint and I've done a time lapse so I'm going to explain how I've done it right now. Right here guys, here we go. Um, if you've watched any of my videos before, you see this little masking tape trick where I put the masking tape on just to hold on to some of my more important lines. In this video here, on this painting, um, it's actually not so much about holding on to the important line because it's not that important. It's actually enabling me to, um, I use the paintbrush with the movement of the water. Now you're gonna hear me saying that time and time again. I actually, um, the paintbrush, is going back and forth across there horizontally um, depicting the movement of the water and um, with that masking tape there that means I can just really just let that um, brush go and not have to worry about upsetting any of those lines that I've drawn in or not having to worry about getting paint onto the um, wave that's going to be in the foreground so anyway that's that explained now you saw me start with the darks then I came back with some medium tone and then some light tone. So I'm, I'm actually only using three, three um, colors of paint there. There's a light, there's a medium, and there's a dark. And I've gone and I've put the dark where the dark is, the medium where the medium is, and the light where the light is, uh, without really blending too much. And now, now I'm gonna start coming back and blending some of that in a little bit. Um, and this is just, the um, water that's in the background of the wave of the picture. It's um, not so important to get um, super realistic. Well, it's pretty much, I paint it how it is in the photo, to be honest. It's um, nothing too detailed. So I've done that and I've blended now, and now I'm coming back and maybe I'll probably start reinstating some of the darks, some of the lights, just where I see them, where I think it needs it. Um, I'm using flat synthetic brushes and I'll go over brushes as we go but there's nothing special about that that's just a flat synthetic brush um, the thing is it's a number 16 that one so it's relatively big I suppose for the size of the painting and um, when I'm using these synthetic brushes on waves I like to have new brushes so it's a nice crisp edge that it creates okay so that's that's the background initially blocked in now I'm going to start on the foreground of the wave. Now you see I'm also working, I'm working on a, um, a board. It's not on canvas, actually just a board. So it's a prepared board, which I prepared myself. And I've stained it that orangey ochre colour. I suppose it's a yellow ochre colour. Um, and I didn't know how that was going to go actually for the wave. This is the colour that I'd normally stain it to paint a landscape. But in actual fact, I don't regret it. It actually came, when the ochre came through, now I looked at the finished painting, it actually, it's helped the painting out a little bit. So people stain their canvases, um, oranges, ochres, greys, you know, I think it's personal preference, but that's what I like doing. So now you'll see me, same again. I'm putting the darks where the darks are um, in the reference photo. So there they go in. And that dark, my palette is titanium white, cadmium yellow light, cadmium orange, red matter, phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, and burnt umber. 
So my dark is made with burnt umber and ultramarine blue. That's how I make my black. If you see me, I've added some, I've actually added, it's hard to see, but I've actually added some red into those darks. So they're, it's a very, very dark blue, but leaning towards a little bit purple with the red. Very subtle. So now you see me just going around, literally just putting the right colour in the right place. I know that sounds like I'm making that sound ridiculously easy, but that is essentially what I'm doing. And I'm doing a little bit of blending right there. As I was about to say, I'm not really blending, but you know, I'm essentially I'm not doing too much blending at this stage. So a quick chat about colour, guys, because you see me putting some colour on there. Um, well, I'll flash my palette up again so you see the colours I use. But that light grey purple there, it's pretty simple in that palette. Burnt umber and ultramarine blue make my black. Add titanium white, you get grey. So you've got your grey. If that grey looks like it's a bit purple, purple is red and blue. So I've added ultramarine blue and red to a grey to make a very light grey. Um, this working from a primary palette, is, it's a lot of common sense and it's a lot of practice. But um, I think it's, yeah, it's quite rewarding and it's quite fun. Um, there's a light brown there. You're a pretty good clue that that's burnt umber and white. But it's a little bit grey. So I've added some of that grey to it. But yeah, this works for me. Um, it's easy to explain because it's as simple as blue and red make purple. If it looks starts, if it's looking purple, how did I get there? I added blue and red. That's, you know, when, when we do classes here in my studio, um, people start to get the colour um, fairly quickly because, you know, blue and red make purple, blue and yellow make green. It's, um, it's all quite simplistic, really. It's just practice. Now, that blue I'm coming through there, there is a difference between the thalo blue, which I have in my palette, and the ultramarine blue. And thalo blue is that pure blue, a, re a very, very just bright blue, whereas um, ultramarine blue is more of a violet colour. So, and you'll see the difference when you're mixing. If you use this palette, you'll see the difference between the phthalo blue and the ultramarine blue. And nine times out of ten, I'm using the ultramarine blue, especially in mixing. But every now and again, particularly in skies and in water like this, I'm using phthalo blue. Phthalo blue mixed with the cadmium yellow pale. If you use thalo blue and just a little bit of cadmium yellow pale, you'll get a viridian colour. The viridian colour is what's in this wave up in the top of the keel there. And that's how I got that colour. So you can see that viridian actually coming in to that foreground a little bit too. Now, just like I've done the top, I put the darks in, I put my medium tones in, and now I'm coming back and putting some of my lights in. But I'm not going all the way, because this is just my first pass. This is my first pass, and I think I do this painting in three or four passes. I, um, I put this pass on, this block and layer, and then I let that dry, and I come and put a subsequent layer on top. And I err on the side of a little bit dark with this first layer. I go a little bit darker, and you'll see that as the video goes on, you'll see that second layer, why I prefer to go dark on the first one. A little bit darker than it needs to be. So now that I've got those colours sort of mosaic in there really, the darks and the medium tones and the lights, now I come back and I start doing a little bit of blending. But notice, still using synthetic flat brushes. Just varying sizes. And basically, yeah, quite brand new ones. Very new. So they've got that nice crisp edge. Yeah, I'm going to make a liar of myself shortly because very shortly I'll probably start using, and uh, yeah, right now, an old synthetic flat brush.
that's a really, really old synthetic flat brush that's become more splayed out. And now it's actually good if I stipple it, basically just dabbing it, I start to create that whitewash look. That's how I do it. The burst of whitewash. Notice it's quite mauve, quite purple. And, and now I'm back down the bottom. I know it's difficult to watch, but that's how I that's how I do the painting. I move around the whole canvas. I know I block the background in very first, and I often do that. But once I start painting like this, I'm sort of moving all over the place. And it's um, it's probably good to see on the video because um, I know when I was editing the time lapse, it's like I'm all over the show. But I paint the whole thing at once. I don't spend too long in any one spot. That's probably just the way my mind works, maybe, I don't know, but that's how I like to do it. And those colours, that's that grade off colour I'm putting on there right now has a bit of phthalo blue in it. When you mix phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, burnt umber and a little bit of white, you basically get Prussian blue, if you know what Prussian blue is. So I'll say that again from my palette, if you mix ultramarine blue, a little bit of phthalo blue and burnt umber, that gives you a colour that's basically Prussian blue. Now moving around, I'm probably getting towards, I'm getting on with this first pass. I don't know, I don't know how long, long this took, I think this took maybe two and a half hours to do this first block and layer, maybe just two hours. Putting a hint of sky reflection in there, I won't go too far. I'll give you a clue, that sort of thing like sky reflection is much easier to do once this painting is dry and you're coming back on a second pass. Don't get caught up, if you're trying to paint this at home, don't get caught up trying to put too much detail into this first block and layer. Just put, it's a block and layer, put blocks of colour where they're supposed to be. Blend them a little bit, don't, don't get too carried away trying to finish the painting in one layer. In my experience, seascapes are very, very hard to, to paint in an ala prima, just in one session, it's difficult. It's much easier to paint it indirect. Let it dry, come back, let it dry, come back, layer upon layer. Right, so this is a familiar thing with me. I started to put some detail in and I just like, with that big brush, I just sort of like dab it out a little bit so only a little bit of detail remains. That's something that I find I do a lot. Right, so that was that there, now we're on the second pass. So I've actually let that painting dry and now you're on the second day now. It's actually the very next day and I'm coming back and I'm starting to work on that background again with it working wet over dry paint, which is much easier to control. Much, much easier to control. And basically from here on in, I'm putting on almost semi-transparent paint layers. I use Lequin, Winsor & Newton Lequin is my medium, and I use, the, I use the medium very sparingly, so I don't have much medium on there. But when I put that paint on, it's almost like a dry brush technique. It's somewhere between a glaze and a dry brush. It's kind of a weird thing. But I'm not getting good coverage. So, just reinstating those darks and those lights. Now is probably, now would be a good time for me to explain how the darks and lights work in the ocean. Right, so here we are. Now, I never said this was ever going to be a high-end production. So, come in, come in. It's pretty basic. That's you. 
I've never met you, but I think you look something like that. There's the sky, here's the sea. This is like the fundamental, give me another brush, of how it sort of works. The wave, when you look at a wave, there's a dark bit. And there'll be a light bit. Another brush. Hope it's making sense. The light bit, the light bit slowly goes down into the hollow of the wave and then it gets darker. Come right in close. Right in close. Then it gets lighter again. This is the, this is the key to painting waves. Slowly lighter. Lighter. Okay. So what you've got, if it goes down, then into the face of the wave, it gets darker. A, it gets darker because you've got the sun up there. It's casting a shadow. This wave is casting a shadow, so it's making that lip become appear darker underneath the lip there. And also, you're looking into the water and you're actually seeing the colour of the water because here you've seen a reflection of the sky. So when you look here, you've seen the water. When you look there, you've seen the reflection of the sky. And why is that so important? Because where the dark comes up dark, where the dark meets the light, there's a hard edge. It's a hard edge there. And then, when the light comes down, it transitions slowly back into the dark. So you get a hard edge, get dark, a hard edge to light, 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 slowly darker, slowly darker, slowly darker, until it gets dark, then hard edge again into the light. Trust me, I'll show you. Right, so now I've got a painting here and you can see that hard edge. So we had, it was light, was going slowly, 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 transitioning up to the dark and then there's a hard edge and then there's light again. And it happens again and again and again. Let me get that little diagram back. That's the key to painting the sea, so far, from what I've found. Anyway, back to the painting. Okay, so now you're going to see me doing that pattern, or creating that pattern, within this wave, over and over again, especially now that I'm um, defining these lights and darks in the um, background there. So I've done that, and I've gone up, and you can see I'm working on the foreground now, but you can see in the background it's slightly um, transitioning up to that dark edge and there's quite a hard edge where it goes back to the light. Now, bearing in mind that is a harder edge when the wave is cresting. If the wave isn't cresting and it's just a swell, it's going to be another soft edge. So, but anyway, that pattern keeps on forming over and over again in the ocean or in water. And you can even see it forming I'd started to create that in the block in block in of my foreground area below the wave. So now I'm working into that foreground area, remembering that this painting is bone dry now, so I'm coming across wet over dry all the time, which is like I said, it's much easier to control that paint. Wet uh, wet over dry, and I'll just be going darks and lights, um, working my way around the whole painting sort of all at one time, not spending too long in any one area. Just working here and there. So, hey, I hope you found that information. If you're beginning and you're learning to paint the sea, I'm sure that was, um, I would have given anything for that sort of information when I was starting out. So hopefully you enjoy that. Um, 
if that was like, if you already knew that, if you knew that, you wouldn't really be watching a wave painting tutorial. So anyway, look at it. So increasing the darks in the areas. Just working darks and lights, guys. And like I say, not a great coverage. Like a, how do I describe this? Um, the paint is about the consistency of probably soft butter with the Lequin. And then putting hardly any paint on. That's essentially, that's it. Actually putting hardly any paint on. There's not a lot of paint on my brush. So I'm almost like glazing it or scumbling these colours on. And you can see, you can see it just then when I put quite a bright purple on there too. But anyway, I'll let that play out and you guys can just watch that. And you know what I'm doing now. I'll let it play slowly. So if you are trying to figure out exactly how I do it, it's not gonna, you're not gonna be rushed. Enjoy the painting. Okay, so now I'm coming back with these light glazes, really. Now, remember when I blocked in, I said I err on the side of going a little bit too dark, if anything. And that's why I go too dark. So I can come back with these light glazes, and I get that nice contrast between the dark and the light. And this is much easier to control once it's um, painting wet over dry. So I can just paint those in just very, very easily. And this glassy water, believe it or not, is probably some of the easiest water there is to paint. Glassy water, like that. Just remembering that light or dark, tran light transitioning up to dark, then that hard edge. You see it there? It's happening there on a small scale. But yeah, and if you put too much paint on and you want to take a little bit off, what I do is I've got a very clean brush and I put it in some Lequin and I use the Lequin to almost just lift the paint off if I want to take a little bit of paint off. Bearing in mind that what underneath is dry it'll still be there so you can take a little bit of paint off sort of like just go backspace
Now, this part here is not as tricky as it might look. So this is this becomes a transparent splash of water coming up from the breaking wave. Um, but you see what I'm doing there? Once again, still got one of those synthetic flat brushes. And see how I roll it in my fingers? I roll it around, so sometimes I'm working with the razor's edge, and sometimes, you know, a little bit more flatter brush there. And But essentially, it's just, you're almost just painting the outline of the water. That's the start of it. It's the start of all this transparent little bit of splash down here. But the transparency, you'll see later on, it has some dark in it and some light in it. There's all sorts of things going on within that transparent water, but you just got to, you know, this is the importance of working from a really, a really good uh, reference photo. So I took this photo myself, and you know, if you've got a good reference photo, you just pay attention to it. Pay attention to the colours, because one of the important things is where that transparent splash starts on the left, it's quite purple. But as it comes around to the right, come down the other side, it's actually catching the sky reflection and it's quite blue. And those sorts of things are really important. Just paying attention to the colour and the tones that you're putting on. Once again, get the right colour. But it's just starting to, you can see now it's starting to get a little bit of uh, realism to it. It's starting to get a bit of life to it, this painting.
Okay, guys, now, now this is probably, I think this is probably one of the trickiest parts of painting water is painting these little bits of foam, in my experience with the people that come to my classes here. This is something they struggle to, um, to grasp, but um, a essentially it's just a transparent, little bit of um, purpley grey coming in there. And it really does add some life to your water. But hey, um, we're probably going to leave this tutorial here and I'm going to come back and finish the second half because it's getting quite long. Um, geez, well done if you've sat through this. Um, remember to subscribe if you're liking this and click the bell and you'll get a, um, a notification when I make the second half, which won't be far away. Um, but I'll make the second half. The second half is really the details. And we'll fast forward. Fast forward the rest of this so you see what's to come. And um, but I'll narrate the rest of it. And you can um, we'll come back and watch that in about a week's time. Cheers guys. Happy painting. <laughs>